nothing must happen to Gwari. I pray that he comes back alive with more vigor. Their laughing also lauded the gallantry and achievements of the Nigerian armed forces on the fight against insurgency. On the abandoned Oyo regional water scheme at Irelu, Oba Lamidi Adeyemi urged the government to complete the project for the benefit of the people. I want to appeal to you that if what they have spent, if I have spent of one billion, will not go into disuse. One, the wrong want to be vandalized. Through you, I'm uh, appealing to you, to the federal government, that 425 million remaining should not be a disturbance to realize of the project. <laughs> And Demola is on standby in our Lagos studios with more reports from that zone. Hello, Demola, you're on. Thank you, Awa. Good afternoon and welcome to Lagos. The impact of stable power supply cannot be overemphasized, especially as it, as it has multiplying effect on societal growth and development. The present administration has, amongst other mandate, made efforts to improve electricity generation and distribution since assumption of office. Linda Amaku, who went, around to who went to town to feel the pulse of the people on power supply in their various environment, compiled this report. The average Nigerian rely on electricity for productivity and domestic use. This makes electricity a primary requirement in their daily lives. A correspondent gathered that there seemed to be a remarkable improvement in power supply in some parts of the metropolis. For some days now, we've been having good light. Um, in actual fact, I told somebody that we're going to celebrate seven days undisrupted uh, light. Well, we move on to the next report. Speaking out for help by victims has been identified as one of the measures that could reduce incidences of rape and sexual assaults in the country. Speakers made a submission at a one day symposium in Lagos, the event organized by Action Group on Adolescent Health, Lagos State University Teaching Hospital, Luth. Ken Egbeluhe has the details. Statistics of rape in Nigeria is still hazy due to social and cultural limitations that discourage victims from speaking out. Speakers at the symposium believe that it is social evil that has reached explosive proportions. It has ruined many lives and continues to do so at a frantic pace. Most affected are women and a few men. The symposium on finding solutions to rape minors in the country by medical students of Lagos University Teaching Hospital, therefore, is to create awareness on the need for rape victims to speak out. There has been a lot of silence on the issue for a very long time, and if we are the future of the medical um, and health system, we should be well informed so that we will be able to deal with this issue when we are presented with um, such cases. We will enlighten us, both male and female, in helping to combat this issue because it's actually a very troubling thing that has to be combated and these seminars are going to go a long way. Speakers identified enforcement of law on rape as one critical way of reducing the scourge. They challenged relevant agencies to encourage victims of rape to report cases of abuse. Other issues raised by speakers include training of security personnel on forensic investigation and educating medical practitioners on the techniques in laboratory analysis. For us to begin to get it right, police personnel to be trained on how to conduct forensic examination. They must be provided with the kits, because we have a rape kit that you use to scoop biological evidence. So the thrust of, of this is to break the silence, to ensure that people know what to do and how to prevent rape. Action Group on Adolescent Health is a non-governmental organization to bring about health and well-being of young people in Africa. In Lagos, Ken Igbeluge, NTA News. We now go back to our earlier story on the power situation in, within the Lagos metropolis. The impact of stable power supply cannot be overemphasized, especially as it has multiplying effect on societal growth and development. 
The present administration has, among other things, other mandate, made efforts to improve electricity generation and distribution since assumption of office. Linda Maku, who went to town to feel the pulse of the people on power supply in their various environments, compiled this report. The average Nigerian rely on electricity for productivity and domestic use. This makes electricity a primary requirement in their daily lives. A correspondent gathered that there seemed to be a remarkable improvement in power supply in some parts of the metropolis. For some days now, we've been having good light. Um, in actual fact, I told somebody that I'm going to celebrate seven days undisrupted uh, light. There's a little improvement on the area of lights and this all this is helping business to strive for the past months now there have been constant lights but each time they take it it doesn't take much hour before they bring it home i live at ikurudu udugunyo as a good dollar that's where i live in ikurudu the power is okay over there while some are counting the blessings others are counting the losses at the gondi akiso there's nothing like light for past one year. In between the area, there's no much improvement. Others, however, bemoaned the increase in electricity tariff, which they say is not commensurate with the power consumed. We have crazy bills given to us from the power holdings, and this has not improved the supply and distribution of power. While electricity distribution seems to have improved, Respondents appealed to stakeholders in the electricity generation and distribution chain to intensify their efforts to ensure constant supply of electricity across the country. Well, that does it from Lagos. It's back to you, Awa, for more on Nationwide. Good afternoon. Thanks to you, Demola. Moving on, the federal government is to come up with a program that will provide financial and technical support for farming communities in the country. Thus, the Minister of State for Agriculture, Hainakin Lokwaberi, said will be achieved through the Bank of Agriculture. Musa Baba Aliu has the details. The idea to support the rural farming communities was based on their contributions to the national food production in ensuring food security. The Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations estimated that over 70% of food consumed in Nigeria is produced by rural farmers. The major challenges are access to credit, modern farming know-how, and tools to boost their production. So we discovered that the best way to do that is to use cooperative system. Now, cooperative system is so good in the sense that rather than giving individual loan or anything, we group them together and uh, they will now stand shorty for themselves. Apart from the small milling facility that will be provided by the Ministry of Agriculture to support production at rural level, 8 million fish processing equipment will also be distributed. The Minister of State for Agriculture says the Bank of Agriculture is being encouraged to provide a loan facility to farmers at single-digit interest. As a government, we are willing to support all those Nigerians you know, who are investing or who are interested in investing in agriculture, you know, with all the support that they need, you know, to be able to uh, invest uh, uh, therein. The Bank of Agriculture is undergoing recapitalization process to meet its primary objectives. In Abuja, Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. Youth Corps members deployed to Nasser State have been charged to explore the agriculture potential of the state to their advantage. This was the message of Governor Umaru Tanko Al Makura at the closing ceremony of the 2017 Batch A Stream 2 orientation course in Kefi, Nasser State. Suleiman Ovie Musa reports. Represented by the Deputy Governor Silas Agara, Governor Umaru Tanku Almakura assured the youth corps members of their security while encouraging them to participate in community development in rural areas and coexist peacefully with the host communities. Accordingly, not less than 80% of our people are engaged in one agricultural activity or the other. This natural endowment, I must say, offer individuals, groups, and corporate organizations opportunity to explore for economic 
prosperity of our community, state and the country at large. Some youth corps members speak on their readiness to contribute their quota to the development of the country. I'm very happy to serve in Nasara State, and by the grace of God, I will deliver my service with effectiveness. I will give you my best. As you can see, I've started it in the orientation camp, being the parade commander. 1,953 youth corps members participated in the orientation course. From Kefi, Suleiman of Musa, NTA News. And for Nigeria to achieve inclusive growth and add value to her citizens, Government, ministries, departments and agencies must be proactive in ensuring strict adherence to public procurement rules. Director General of the National Orientation Agency, Garba Abari, said that these are the workshop on good procurement process for the public sector in Abuja. Musa Abubakar reports. Studies indicate that public procurement process in Nigeria have some time been characterized with inflated contract figures and supply of inferior goods, amongst other factors, which have denied the citizenry access to quality infrastructures critical for socio-economic development. It is in recognition of this factor that this workshop seeks to enlighten public officers on the role of effective procurement process. Government is talking about prudence in the management of public resources. A good procurement process will give us good infrastructures. It will give us good education, health care. It will enable them to advise government or their chief executive. To the participants, the workshop will equip them in ensuring strict adherence to due procurement process. Procurement officers are expected to sit down and do what is right in the process of procurement process. The idea is to entrench prudent management of scarce public resources with a view to ensure public service respond to the needs of the citizenry. It is believed that the move is in line with the change begins with the initiator. In Abuja, I am Musa Abubakar, NTA News. And Femi Chit in our Joss Network Center has more reports on Nationwide. Good afternoon to you. Hello and welcome to Joss. Minister of Mines and Steel, Coyote Fayemi, has directed the immediate closure of illegal mining sites at Company Zurak, Wasi local government area of Plateau State. The Minister, National Security Advisor, Baba Gana Mongono, Governor Simon Lalong, as well as the member representing Wasi Federal Constituency, Idris Maji, were on a fact-finding mission to the area. Abba Bubakari Akubu reports. The minister warned that henceforth anyone engaged in illegal deals will be dealt with, as the present administration will not give room for economic sabotage. He explained that although Zurak has the richest deposit of lead and zinc in Africa, the state and the federal governments have not benefited from it. I have invoked the authority of the Nigerian Mining and Minerals Act 2007 to shut down every operation in your community, to also declare your area a special mining zone. The minister and national security advisor directed the special tax force and the police to close all illegal mining sites. With the fact from today, every single facility is closed. If I hear that this order has been violated, it is you have come after me. Governor Simon Lalong said this action marks the start of the fight against illegal mining in the state. Illegal miners are going with chain of cars here and there. It's very soon it will be over for them. Not for me, but for all of you who are standing here. Transition Committee Chairman was the local government council, Adu Buba, noted that all attempts to discourage the illegal act had been met with stiff resistance. Meanwhile, President of the Bashar Community Development Association, Zakir Mohammed, has appealed to the agencies to investigate the level of environmental degradation owing to illegal mining activities. 24 workers of the illegal mining companies, 16 Chinese nationals, were arrested at various mining sites and camps. In Jos, Abba, Abu Bakari Akubu, NTA News. Talking health, good team work, proper communication and early checks on equipment are said to be key parameters of patient safety in any health facility. 
Director of Patient Safety Africa, Dr. Sonny Semedi, stated this in a lecture delivered at the Joss University Teaching Hospital. Ben Mitu reports that the lecture is titled Patient Safety Solutions and WHO Checklist Implementation. The Chief Medical Director says globally, development comes through collaboration and the teaching hospital will not be an exception as it opens its doors for research institutes around the world for improved service delivery. And no institution can go it its own. have to collaborate with other institutions and other organizations that are interested in research. In a lecture titled Opportunity for Research Capacity Strengthening and Collaboration with Global Health Network, guest lecturer Dr. Oluwa Benga Ogunfowakun said Oxford University, through Global Health Research Network, has provided grant for clinical researchers, especially in Africa, for the advancement of health care delivery. For youth to benefit from such grants, there is need to form research groups to enable them access the platform. Clinical research, he insists, is a sure way of improving the health care system in Nigeria. For example, we have various diseases killing people, and we have various products, local products, that we can actually develop to a point of manufacturing that can be used to treat our own local diseases. But before we can do that, we should know the methods of doing that. The lecture had in attendance management staff, resident doctors, as well as house officers. In Joss, Ben, Me Too, NTN News. And it's a wrap from Joss. How are it's back to you in Abuja for more news? Many thanks. And a reminder that you can watch this news live online via the NTA mobile app, which you can download on your Android device at the Google Play Store or at the Apple Store if you use devices with iOS. And it's nationwide on the network service of the NTA. Time to take some messages. We'll be back shortly. <laughs> National Council for Arts and Culture, Abuja presents 10th African Arts Crafts Expo, AFAC Expo 2017, the biggest arts and crafts expo in Africa. Theme, Nigerian Crafts, the untapped treasure. Date, 27th August to 17th September 2017. Venue, Arts and Crafts Village, beside Shawatan Hotel and Yaradua Center, Abuja. Time, 9 a.m. daily. AFAC presents a unique platform for artists, crafts dealers, manufacturers, and other stakeholders to buy, sell, and promote products from Nigeria and other African countries. For more information, please call Chiwe on 0803-321-7724, Gerald on 0802-3345-301, National Council for Arts and Culture, Our Culture, Our Pride, Otumba Olushago Ronshewe, Director General Announcement. dream occasion without stress. Horizon Caterers will provide answers to all your kitchen questions. Exquisite hall designs, mouth-watering and nourishing local and continental cuisine, suitable for all types of ceremonies, including weddings, AGMs, business luncheon, cocktails. Name it, we can bring it. Our chefs and executive waiters give your guests that unforgettable experience in service. Our service covers all states of the Federation. Call us today to book your locations. 0805-502-9637-0803-450-9726-0909-9708-111. Horizon Ketras. Experience catering beyond the horizon. Marriage is a union between a spouse and the spouse of the spouse and the family of the spouse. You're not only married to your husband, but to his brothers and sisters. Oh yes, but only where that is sensibly convenient. Hmm? Don't get it twisted. Marriage is as sweet as you make your home for your partner. He or she is not your slave or a workhorse, there to serve your brothers, sisters, and relatives to her own detriment or his own detriment. It is foolery of you to have allowed your family members cause catastrophic quagmire of epic proportions in your marriage. Eh? So says Professor John Boone. <laughs> 
your rib cracking comedy in this episode titled Married to Family. They want to take advantage of, of my of my Philomena. Over and out. Brought to you by Glow. The largest data network. Glow Unlimited. Hotels Abuja, the ultimate place to be. Get ready for the Diaspora Festival, Badagri, Lagos, as we welcome diasporans. Our ancestors walked through the door of no return. Now we walk through the door of return. And also to celebrate the cultural heritage of Nigeria. Theme, Voyage to Heritage, featuring a lot of exciting activities like the historic Door of Return Ceremony, Carnival Procession, Boat Regatta, Dark Era Procession, Fishing Competition, Heritage Site Visits, International Music Concert, an International Symposium, Theme, African Diaspora Beyond the Atlantic, and lots more. Date. 23rd to 25th of August 2017. For sponsorship and more information, please call. Come and join the voyage to heritage. See you there. Reorganized, trained, and fully equipped, we are the new improved Nigeria Police Force. We fight crime. We bust syndicates. Whatever the crime, wherever the hideout, the Nigeria Police Force will get you busted. Stop kidnapping, armed robbery, murder, pipeline vandalism and other criminal activities. Be productive. Be security conscious. Join the police force to secure your life and property. This message is from the Nigeria Police Force, Force Public Relations Department. With heavy hearts and gratitude to God for a life well spent, we announce the passing of our father and grandfather, Chief David Atta, on 4th of July 2017. Until his death, Chief David Atta was a staunch Methodist, veteran journalist, and elder statesman. He served as the Chief Press Secretary to former heads of state, a state commissioner, and also a member of the Federal House of Representatives during the Second Republic. One time member of the Board of Directors of the Nigerian Television Authority, he is remembered as an exemplary philanthropist by his people. Funeral arrangements are as follows. Thursday, 17th August 2017, body departs the University of Jaws Teaching Hospital for his residence. B60, David Atta Street, Hodco Quarters, North Bank, Mako di Benue State, for the first week keep. Friday, 18th August, body departs his residence in Mako to his family home in Igumale, Ado, local government, Benue State, for the second week keep. Saturday, 19th August, open air church service at 10 a.m. Interment follows at 1 p.m. May his gentle soul rest in peace. Atta, Emmanuel Atta, for the family. Announcer. <laughs> Thanks for rejoining us on Nationwide. The General Court Marshal sitting at the 101 Air Defense Group, Nigerian Air Force Base, Makudi, has sentenced aircraftman Kalu Bernard Ayomide to death by hanging. He was convicted of killing an aircraft woman, Oladi Pupo Sholake Dukas, on March the 12th, 2017. John Yaku reports that Kalu Bernard Ayomide was sentenced, was convicted on a six-count charge, including murder. The general court martial with 10 members, including its president, started sitting on the 22nd of May 2017, 
to determine the involvement of aircraft man Carlo Bernard in the murder of aircraft woman Oladipo Sholakwe. A total of 16 witnesses testified in the case with 32 documents admitted. 13 of the witnesses appeared for the prosecutor while 3 appeared for the defense counsel. An 8 count charge was brought up against the accused. They are murder, housebreaking, impersonation, attempt to commit suicide, failure to perform military duty, loss of service property, conduct to prejudicial service and disobedience to standing order. President of the court, Group Captain Eliza Philip Bindu, sentenced the accused to death by hanging on count one and a life sentence on count four. Count two has five years imprisonment while count five, six and eight have two years imprisonment each. The accused was however acquitted on count three and seven. This verdict is subject to the confirmation by the convening authority. Aircraftman Carlo Bernard joined the Nigerian Air Force on the 3rd of January 2016, serving just a total of 593 days in the force. In Makudi, John Yaku, NTA News. And still staying with the military, in keeping with its commitment to ensure the welfare of men and officers of the Nigerian Navy, the Eastern Naval Command has inaugurated a transit accommodation at its headquarters. Flag Officer Commanding Eastern Naval Command, Rear Admiral Victor Adedikbe, is optimistic that the accommodation will boost the morale of the personnel. Isaac Nkuma has three tools. Maintaining security along the territorial waters and maritime domain of the country remains the primary responsibility of the Nigerian Navy. Authorities at the Eastern Naval Command say the 30-man ratings accommodation will contribute in achieving its mandate and ensure optimal performance of its men and officers policing the creeks of Calabar. The project of uh, building the 30-man uh, ratings uh, transit accommodation was embarked upon by the, the Eastern Naval Command in furtherance of uh, the Chief of Naval Staff um, direct, uh, strategic directive in the area of infrastructure development. It will definitely boost their morale because uh, those uh, hitherto were living in places that weren't uh, comfortable, now have uh, their home cabins and um, they can live very well. The ratings transit accommodation is one of the welfare projects of the Eastern Naval Command to improve the living standard of personnel on operation at River Rhine areas. Isaac Nkuma, NTA News. Former chairman of the Independent National Electric Commission, Professor Atahiru Jiga, believes that qualitative education is no doubt a panacea for a meaningful development in any nation. This is coming against the backdrop of incessant strikes by public universities. Patricia Esame Lube completes the report. In order to ensure sustained success in the 21st century, experts are advocating a total relook, repositioning, as well as transformed behavior and outcomes in Nigeria's education sector. We need to be aware about the dynamics of these changes in other countries so that we can pick good practices and apply them in the management of our own uh, universities here and also to establish a good regulatory framework uh, for the operation of universities in Nigeria. Higher education institutions in the country function in, in different ecosystems and have to deal with different contextual promptly. But the current state of the sector has become a recurring decimal over the years, especially strikes, calls for another look at the way forward. hope that all the stakeholders that are involved in ensuring that our universities are fit for purpose, we learn good lessons from the current episode of another strike. I think we've had too many strikes, and everybody should be concerned that we should bury the hatchet of strikes in the Nigerian university system. This is very sad that even though there is a negotiating team that is in place, we still have a strike at this point in time. I think it is good for thought, and I hope that every effort will be taken very quickly to ensure that this strike is brought to an end. Speakers were unanimous in their position that cutting-edge approaches and tools must be deployed in government's education transformational journey. In Abuja, Patricia A. Samiluba.
NTA News. And the University of Port Harcourt joins ASU Strike just as Governor Nwike hosts National Science Teachers. Let's now join Diva Bari for details. Thank you, Hawa. Good evening and welcome to Port Harcourt. The Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, River State has joined the ongoing nationwide strike to drive home their demands from the government. Chairman of the University of Port Harcourt branch, Austin Sado, says all academic activities have been suspended after an agreement reached at the Congress held earlier today. Robinson Daratidi has the details. Dr. Austin Sado says the nationwide strike is inevitable because federal government could not implement up to 30% of the agreement entered with ASU in 2009. Some of the agreements include the refusal of government to register ASU recognized pension management company, Nopenko, refusal to continue the payment of end academic allowances since 2013, as well as university revitalization fund, among others. Rising from this meeting, we are writing the administration to inform them that our members are withdrawing their services from every form of engagement that is academic. And by that we mean that there will be no teaching, there will be no supervision, there will be no examination, there will be no part-time teaching, there will be no sandwich. Everything that has to involve academics will end henceforth. If universities are not revitalized, the university standard will collapse on us, and our children today will ask us, when you were there, what did you do? Some students appeal to government to address the situation so as not to prolong the strike. I'm not that happy about the strike, but we need to support them as long as they are fighting for the right to the students and for the right to the universities. We really want the government to intervene on our behalf. There are strong indications that River State-owned universities may also join the strike in spite of alleged directive of the government to them not to join. As at the time of filing the report, River State University also was still in Congress. In Port Harcourt, Robinson, Delateide, NTA News. River State Governor Yeson Wike has called for the development of science and mathematics as a roadmap to the growth of the country. The governor was speaking when the National Executive Members of Science Teachers Association of Nigeria stand led by its president, Mohamed Maloud, paid him a courtesy visit at Government House Port Harcourt. Ogedi Unyekwere reports. National Executive Members of Science Teachers Association, led by its president, Mohamed Moulud, were in Government House to inform the governor of the 60th anniversary conference of the association holding in Port Harcourt. Governor Wike noted that part of the challenges facing the country's educational system is the negligence in the teaching of science and mathematics, adding that some schools across the country have no science and mathematics teachers. If we are doing the right thing, nobody will talk about the structure. Because things are not done in the right way, so we are clamoring for the structure. That is all. President, Science Teachers Association, Mohamed Mouloud said the contribution of the association to national development is significant as the association has spearheaded major curricular development and renewals in the country, as well as taking science to the grassroots through the low-cost publications in science subjects. To promote cooperation among science teachers in Nigeria with a view of raising the standard of science education in the country. To provide a forum for discussion by science teachers on matter of common interest. To help science teachers keep in touch with development in science and its application to industry and commerce. The association will induct Gabno Wike as one of their patrons in course of the conference. In Port Harcourt, Oge Dinyekwe, NTA News. Residents of Rukwoku in Obiakbo, local government area of River State, are still counting their losses following a heavy downpour which left some areas heavily flooded. Dibabari Sedoma Nwaike reports that the people are calling for quick intervention to the perennial problem. 
Recent flooding in Port Harcourt and its environs have left many families homeless as homes were flooded. Residents of Rumujima and Rumapu in Rupoku are not left out as these communities are still battling with the effects of the flooding as the connecting road from Rumujima to Eneka has been submerged by water. Residents say building on waterways and dumping of refuse in drainage are the likely causes for this level of flood and have resorted to the use of kino. As you can see, the people are no longer uh, occupying their premises as they ought to. So um, we are only appealing to the government. The community are passing through hell. We need the assistance of government. This is something that will happen yearly when it comes to rainy season. You see every tenant, every indigenous of this community, most of them are out looking for a means to survive. You can see the weight of the water. This particular place we are standing here, vehicle pass through here to Eneka, to other communities. We don't have any other alternative than to be crying to God and to the government to assist us. They say if the flow of water is properly channeled, the water will go to the nearest canal and flooding will be controlled. In Port Harcourt, Dibabari Sid Mawike, NTA News. And that's it from Port Harcourt. I am Jenny Basi. It's now back to you, Hawa, in Abuja. Many thanks to you, Jenny. And moving on now, staff of the Nigerian Television Authority have been urged to redouble efforts to complement the management's desire to transform the organization. Executive Director Administration and Training, Dr. Steve Ebo, gave the advice during a visit to the NTA Makudi Network Center. Elias ETF reports. Visit by the Executive Director Administration and Training is to acquaint himself with the centers and to appreciate their challenges having been appointed into the office recently. Dr. Steve Egbo, who acknowledged that NTA is confronted with many challenges, including that of poor remuneration, urged staff to show more commitment and dedication to duty in order to live up to its role as a mouthpiece of the society. So we looked at all these issues, and the report found that for the time this board will be on the seat, we will do something to make sure that there is a change. In her address of welcome, the acting zona director of the center, Mrs. Eunice Ekpo, said the organization is saddled with many responsibilities and appealed to the executive director to use his office to address some of the problems. Other management and staff of the organization during the interactive session enumerated some of the challenges of the center to in Makudi, Elias, Etiav, Antinus. The temporary ban on the collection of tenement rates by the Abuja Municipal Area Council has been lifted. This recent development was revealed to journalists at a media briefing at the council secretariat. Habiba Oladipo has the details. AMAC Chairman Abdullahi Adamu Kandido, represented by the Supervisory Council of Finance and Accounts, Hajiya Salamotu Jibril, said the temporary halt on the tenement rate, which is the main revenue of the council, brought on toward hardship and also affected developmental projects in the municipality. To us here in Abuja Municipal Area Council, we consider this historic approval a victory not only for AMAC but also for good people of the council, whom this present administration pledge to uplift their standard of living. It is also regarded a plus to the nation's legislative system and the growth of our democracy. This eminent decision is a clear demonstration of promotions of the rule of law and interests of the masses by the National Assembly. Excited by this development, the Council commended the National Assembly and the FCT Minister, Mohamed Musabello, for their role in restoring their constitutional mandates, emphasizing that these developments will enable the Council to deliver the dividends of democracy to residents, particularly those in the rural communities. So we believe so much in communicating with our problem. If you are able to communicate with them, tell them what you are doing, why you are doing it, I believe they will flow along. We don't necessarily have to use force. To encourage the public, please go to the appropriate quarters and make your payments. If you have further questions, come to the office. The office is always open. We apply the decision of federal capital territory who approved and authorized a mobile court 
for tenement rent and other taxes for that within our area of jurisdiction. The Abuja Municipal Area Council says it is mindful of the current recession in the country. To that end, it has adopted new measures of collecting revenues within the ambit of the law and without the use of force. In Abuja, Happy Baola Dipo, NTA News. And the Nigerian ambassador to Niger, Atahiru Haliru, has presented his letter of credence to the president of Niger, Mamadou Yusufu. In attendance were government officials, including the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Geoffrey Onyema. President Yusufu officially welcomed the Nigerian ambassador and sends greetings to Nigerian President Muhammadu Buhari, who is recuperating in London and wished him quick recovery. President Yusufu noted that Nigeria has remained an important partner of Niger in addressing its developmental problems and humanitarian challenges. And for more reports, and for more reports on the global scene, let's now join Uche Wizu. A warm welcome to this segment of the news. We begin from Zambia, where opposition leader Hakende Hichilema regained his freedom Wednesday with more determination to rule the country. Hichilema, the leader of the United Party for National Development, has been in jail since April for treason, a charge he denies, following his motorcade's alleged blocking of President Edgar Lungu's convoy. Reports from Sierra Leone say hundreds of people are still unaccounted for following a mudslide and flooding that devastated parts of the country's capital, Freetown. Nearly 400 people are confirmed dead, and President Bai Kuruma had appealed for emergency support to the affected areas. Meanwhile, the United Nations is working to prevent the spread of waterborne diseases. In a related development, more than 250 people have died after the monsoon rain caused flooding in India, Nepal and Bangladesh. Millions of people are displaced and the authorities are struggling to reach some areas. In the U.S., reactions have continued to trail the violent protests during a rally in Charlottesville over a plan to remove a statue of Confederate general. President Donald Trump, whose initial response to the crisis drew sharp criticism from Republicans and Democrats, now blames both sides for the violence. You, you had a group on one side that was bad, and you had a group on the other side that was also very violent. This comment has angered leading figures in Trump's Republican Party. And Britain has resolved that there will be no border post between Ireland and the British province of Northern Ireland after Brexit. It said this in an early attempt to tackle one of the most complex aspects of its European Union exit. The British government said in a paper published on Wednesday that it wanted a seamless and frictionless frontier without physical border infrastructure or border posts. That's our package from here. I am Uchi Wizu. Stay tuned for the rest of the news. And sports is next with Amanzi Marcus.